Hi guys, thanks for stopping by my channel today. Now on today's video, I'm gonna do a really super simple project, and that is to sublimate on these Waffle Weave kitchen towels. Now I got these off of Amazon. You get eight of them. I'll put a link in the video description below, and I'll also put a little title right in here that says how much I paid for them. Now these are pretty good size. They are 16 inches by 28 inches. I wanted a full-size kitchen towel. I've seen these that are a lot smaller, but I wanted a full-size kitchen towel. Now, I'm going to print this out on my Epson EcoTank 15,000 that I put sublimation ink instead of the ink that came with it. Some people call that converting. Really, it's just using sublimation ink instead of the ink that comes with it. And then I'm going to print my design on a huge piece of 13 by 19 inch paper. Now, because the background of my design is white, you could do this on a regular size printer, split your design, and split it within the white background so you don't see any white lines. And then lastly, I'll use my heat press that I got off of Amazon, and you'll see that in just a few minutes. For now, let's go ahead and move over to the computer, and I'll show you my design. I'm in Creative Fabrica, and I found a design that I want to use. It's right here. I'm going to make a few changes to it, but the first thing I need to do is click download. Now before I do, let me show you. If you're not a member of Creative Fabrica, you can buy images one by one or fonts one by one, but here's a great opportunity for just a dollar. You can try all their designs for a month. So you could pay your dollar, download 50 designs, and then cancel. You just wanna make sure you cancel before the end of your month. Otherwise, your membership renews at $19 per month. And so I'm going to put a link to this page right here in the video description. All right, get rid of my shameless plug. Now all I'm going to do is I'm going to click on download. I've already downloaded it, but I want you to see the process. So here's some information down here about the file. You can see that you get an SVG, a PNG, an EPS, and a DXF. And the name of the file is, I don't need an inspirational quote, I just need coffee craft design. And so I'm going to go to my downloads and look for that file. It's right here, so I'll go ahead and open that. And then the one that I want to use today is the SVG. You can just do so much more with an SVG than you can a PNG or the other types of files. Now I'm not familiar with EPS, so I don't really know what you can do with that. But with an SVG, you can really manipulate this file. Here it is, it's ready to use if you want to. It's perfectly fine, but I wanna do a few things to it. First, I'm gonna go up to File, Document Properties, and to print this correctly, I need to set up my document at 13 inches by 19 inches. And actually, in my case, I'm gonna go ahead and do 19 by 13. So I change the units to inches down in the custom size. And they may have this paper up above, but I can use the custom size. Then I hit enter. Once I did that, the paper changed and I can just X out of that. Okay, let's see if this is grouped together. It is. I have another file about coffee that came in totally ungrouped. So it might be grouped, it might not be grouped. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and change pixels to inches up here. And right now, mine is 14.142 inches wide by 10.364 inches tall. I can print up to almost 19 inches wide, but remember my towels were only 16 inches wide. So I actually think 14 inches is pretty good size. That gives me an inch of nothing on both sides, and that's pretty perfect. So I'm not going to change the size of this at all. Now with everything grouped, the only thing I can change right now is I could change all the colors to a different color if I wanted it red. Let me go back. Or I could change the size. I could drag it to the side to make it wider without taller. I'll go back. I could drag it from the top or bottom to make it taller without wider. And then as long as it's locked, let's go ahead and lock it. I can drag from a corner and the proportions will stay the same. Notice that even with the proportions locked, I can still grab it from the side and make it wider. I can do the same from the top. So let me look at this for just a minute and think about what I wanna do. Okay, so the first thing that I see is I don't really want these little dots in the cups. So let's go ahead and go Object, 
ungroup. And then I'm going to click on the cup. And I'm going to go up to path and say break apart. So now I still have all the pieces to it, but I can work with each one individually. What I want to do is delete this little circle and this little circle. Now something to help me see exactly where they are, because when I click off of this, I'm, whoops, I'm clicking in there, but I didn't get the right thing. Let me go up to view and x-ray mode. Now, look at that. Isn't that great? Now, I would never want to do everything with this because it gets annoying, but I can see exactly where that circle is and delete it, and exactly where that circle is and delete it. Okay, so I'll go back up to view and get rid of x-ray mode. And then to bring the inside design back, I'm going to select the entire bottom part of the cup. And actually, I have this one too, but that's okay. It's not going to do anything bad. I'll click Path, and I'll combine those back together. And there it is. Now, I notice that this isn't part of the design. Let's see. Okay, so everything is independent. So now I'm going to circle everything in this cup. And I'm just going to go ahead and group those together by going to Object and then Group. I want to do the exact same thing over here. So I go to Path, Break Apart. To see it better, I'll turn the x-ray mode back on, click out of it to unselect those, and then just select what I want to get rid of. All right, let's get rid of x-ray mode again. Select that part of the cup, Path, Combine. And just like the other side, I'm going to go ahead, select the whole cup, and group that together. Now I want to show you something. If you use Cricut Design Space, here's how this is vastly different. Notice that I not only have the cursor line around the cup, but I'm touching one of those little, I don't know what it's called, but we're, we're going to call it a leaf. I'm touching that. In Cricut Design Space, when I let go of the cursor, that little leaf would be selected also. But notice when I let go of the cursor, only shapes that I have my cursor line all the way around are selected. So another thing I'm not too fond of are all these little pieces below this little branch and leaf, whatever we're going to call it. So I'm going to select each one of those. I'll do the same thing over here, but I can just drag all the way around all of them and delete them. And then I'm just going to look it over and see if there's anything else that bothers me. For example, notice how this is further away from this word than this one is. And this is further away from the cup than this one is. I think the cups are even different levels. Let me select this cup, hold the shift key, add this cup to it. Now I go over to align and distribute and say center on the horizontal axis. Let's see if either of those moves. Yes, so they were not at the same level, and now they are. Okay, with them both selected still, I'm gonna go ahead and group those together. So I go to Object and Group. Okay, that looks pretty good, but it still doesn't fix that this is closer to this cup than this one is to this side. Okay, these are all individual things, so let me select everything on this side. And I'll group that, object group. Then I'll do the same thing on the other side. Okay, now here's what I'm going to do just to make sure everything is centered. And it's going to be easier if I move this outline out of the way. Okay, notice the top part of the outline is separate from the bottom, so I'm going to hold the shift, add the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and group that, and then I'm just going to drag that out of the way. Okay, I want all these words or all these letters grouped together. What's going to happen is if I click around all of them, my an is going to be part of it, and I don't want that. So let's see. I can probably get a lot of them without the N. All right, let's go ahead and group those together. 
Then I'll hold the shift key, add my I, add my D, back up to object and group. And then I'm not going to talk through this whole thing, but I'm going to group each word individually, and then I'll show you why. Actually, I want to move this T over a little bit. I feel like the right side of the word quote is further apart than the rest of it. And I'll fix the fact that that's off here in just a minute. Okay, do I have this grouped with the other one? I don't, so I select that one on the left, hold the shift key, and the one on the right, go up object and group. Okay, so now I have my two stems grouped, I have my two cups grouped, and then I have each line of my design grouped. Let me select everything. Then I'm gonna go right over here on the align panel and say center on the vertical axis, and let's see what moves. Okay, so it readjusted everything to be centered down the middle. Notice now this leaf is the same distance to this cup as this one is to this cup, and I'm ready to bring my frame back up. Okay, so now I'm going to select everything, center everything since I brought my frame back up, and then let's see. It looks okay from top to bottom. I do think I want, even though it's technically correct, this is closer to this side than this is. So I'm going to move this one, let's go one more, two spaces over. And I'm going to move the coffee one space to the right. Well, let's go two. And I'm just eyeballing this and moving things the way I think they need to be moved. Even though, like I said, they were technically centered, I'm going to eyeball it and move it where I want it. Okay, so let's see what the size of this is. Right now, went back to pixels. Okay, so we're still at the just over 14 inches by 10 inches tall, a little over 10 inches tall, and that's perfect. Now I've seen a lot of these towels that are just very much black on white. I want to make one change to the color here though. And then I'm noticing something about these cups I don't like. I don't like how they're hugging everything. So I'm going to go up to object and ungroup. Okay, so this one is, how wide is this? Okay, they're both still selected, so it's saying 13 inches wide. So I need to click off of them, click back on this, and this is 2.311. I'm going to make it a little bit narrower. Let's go with 2.2, see what it looks like. Oh, shoot. Let me go back. I want to unlock it so it'll stay as tall as it is. And then go 2.2. And I like that just a little bit better. I can move it to the right. It's not hugging this and it's not hugging the frame now. Let's see what it'd look like if it's taller. Uh, that's getting a little cluttered, so I'll just go like that. Okay, so I changed the width to 2.2. Let's go do the same thing over here. It's unlocked, so I'll say 2.2, and that looks pretty good. Let me hold the shift key down, add this one back to it, and then group those back together. And just to make sure they're in the right place, I'm not sure if this will work, because you know I adjusted things up here. So let's hold the shift key down and add the frame to it, and then say to center them. Okay, it just moved the cups over, so I think that's good. I'm going to leave all the wording black and the frame black, but I want my cups to be a different color. You could change them any color you want. Maybe you want turquoisey, or maybe you want it to be a dark green so it looks like Starbucks. I think their color's green, dark green. Part of their <laughs> part of their cup is green. But what I want is a dark brown. Let's see what this looks like. That's nice. I'm going to go one step darker. 
Can you tell that's not black? It almost looks like it's so dark. It looks like it should be black, but it's not. So I'll go one step lighter and we're going to call that good. One last thing. I feel like that needs to go down just a little bit. Then I'll select everything and group everything together. So with the whole thing selected, I'll go to Object and flip Horizontal. That way it'll print out backwards, and when I press it down, it'll be perfect. So to print this, I'm going to go to File, Print. I've selected the right printer, and then I'm going to look at Page Setup. I want to change this to just one-sided. I don't know that that matters at all, but I always do that. I'll make sure it's on color. And then for sublimation, not everyone does this. I like to use the high setting for quality, and I'll say print. Now, I realized my microphone wasn't plugged in, so let me tell you what I was doing before. I was ripping around the outside edges of the paper, getting kind of close to my design. The reason I did that is because you can get some stray ink on your design and you don't even know it until it's too late once you've pressed it on. So that's why I'm removing a lot of the paper around the design. Now the reason I ripped it instead of cutting it is so that I wouldn't have such a harsh line when I press this onto the towel. There's layers in the paper and by ripping them you kind of make the outside edges thinner and the goal is to not have that harsh line. So I pre-pressed my towel. I did that to remove moisture as well as to make it nice and smooth. Then I folded it in two like if it were hanging. Now I'm going to flip it over, try to position it where I want it, and tape it down. Now I have some paper to put under or between the two layers of the towel. So I'm going to put four pieces of tape on this to try to keep it from shifting or jumping and causing what's called ghosting when it gets kind of blurry. Then I'll put another piece of paper on top and that's to keep the bottom side of my platen protected. Okay, I'm going to do this at 390 for 55 seconds. I put pretty good pressure on that, but I am curious to see with that waffle weave if my design looks solid <laughs> or if you're going to kind of see where the texture of the towel is. I hope it looks good. Even if it doesn't, I'm going to show it to you. I like to put a little pressure down on the top of my platen while I'm lifting that so it doesn't hop. And then I'm going to give this just a little bit to cool off. Now I'm letting it cool off just so I can pull it off and not have to worry about shifting that design across the towel and causing some blurriness. All right, let's see what it looks like. Oh, that's cute. That is really cute. Maybe I could have pressed it a little bit longer. There's a decent amount of ink left on my paper, but this is a waffle weave, and so it's not perfectly flat. But I think it turned out really nice. It's really cute. I'll be proud to hang this. All right, so pressing it, some of that waffle weave is no longer very textured. I don't know if you can see the back side. It's back to textured or it's fully textured. This is kind of smashed down. Hopefully when I wash and dry this, that comes back to the normal texture. I hope this video helped you in some way or you at least found it interesting. If so, please give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. Check out the links that I'll have posted. And until my next video, bye-bye.